What's going on guys, Zaid Alpha with FitAlpha.com. In this video, I wanna give you my third update on how things have been personally going with me on my healing journey with prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain, and sort of give you some of the new insights that I've learned on why certain things work for me, how they can work for you, as well as some of the challenges I ran into that were really frustrating and took me some time to figure out. But first things first, before I get into that, I wanna share a quick update with you that the online course, the four week pelvic health online course that I had put up is no longer available. And I'm gonna share some of the reasons why in the upcoming points, but essentially it wasn't working. It was costing me money. It was very complicated to use for the members. It was kicking people out. The videos were difficult to access and it was requiring a lot of maintenance on my end. And most of the people that started it did not finish it. And so that just kind of gave me all the data I need to see that this product was not working, it was not giving you guys exactly what you needed, and I'm coming up with something new, something better, that has more of a community engagement and community coaching piece to it that I'm gonna share more about at the end of this video. So stick around till the end to hear about that specific resource. Now, back to my personal journey. In the past, I've shared you know, the whole thing I went through that lasted for about two years, with the initial UTI, with the gut issues, with the back injury, and the muscle imbalances. And the last updates I had for you guys is that I was completely pain-free, and the only thing left for me to resolve was some muscle imbalances and tightness on the left side of my body. So the great news is, is that I'm still pain-free. I have not had any flare-ups in the last year or so, pretty much since I've recovered. I have not had any, any pelvic pain whatsoever. There's been some minor momentary exceptions where if I'm sitting for a really, really long time, I'll notice some tension in my hips and my perineum, at which point I'll just release it or get up to walk around and it's gone. And there's been some minor, minor instances where if I was really low on sleep and I had trained really hard the day before, I would notice a little bit of achiness around my butt, my glutes, my legs, and alcohol, still not good for me. Um, caffeine I was consuming for a while I eased back up on it to sort of get rid of like chronic fatigue that I was feeling but alcohol still seems to be a trigger whenever I have it I'm bloated I don't sleep well and my urine burns almost immediately after so my body's telling me that it's not a big fan aside from that the tightness on my left side now this has played a massive role in sort of figuring out why I was in pain in the first place. And again, I've talked about it before. My, my left leg was significantly weaker than my right. My left upper body seemed stronger, more stable and bigger than my right side. And as I've sort of been learning, I realized that I have something called a rib flare, meaning you know the side of my rib, as you can see in the picture, is popping out a little bit. And what's crazy is that this is something I caught when I was like a young teen. I might have been, I don't know, 12, 13, maybe 14. I remember noticing it and asking my dad about it, trying to sort of figure out, my dad was a doctor, so I was trying to get his input on, on it. And he said, it's probably not a big deal. And my 14 year old brain was like, oh, your heart is on the left. So it's probably pushing your ribs out. That's why it's bigger on this side, which is completely ridiculous. Now I understand that this rib flare is actually really common, especially on the left side, because our diaphragm muscles are not equal on both sides, and it's a pattern that PTs are familiar with, where the right side is tight, the left side is sort of more expanded. In my case, there was a hip imbalance. My left leg and my left hip were significantly weaker than the right, and this caused a pull that shortened my left leg left it even weaker, less able to be activated and utilized in daily movement, let alone in exercise and weighted training. And this translated into that rib flare, tightness in my QL and my low back that I pretty much still work through every day. And I haven't had the tools to actually properly fix it until very recently. And one of the reasons that I took down the, the online course is because it was sort of heavy on stretching and doing yoga. And I am now learning that stretching every day is not good for posture. 
because it does not help your muscles get stronger. It only lengthens you and it just pulls at your muscles. So it makes you, leaves you kind of lengthy and less balanced and doesn't actually fix the postural imbalances. And the other piece to that is that stretching doesn't teach your brain anything. That's sort of why it doesn't work. It's sort of like you're just pulling the muscle, it feels good, it stretches out, the effect lasts for like maybe 15 minutes tops and then your brain just goes back to tightening whatever was tight. What does actually work is the myofascial trigger releases that I've talked about so much and I've you know thrown in a couple of the follow along videos that you could do because when you, it's called inhibiting, when you inhibit the muscle and you put pressure on it, it tells your brain to stop sending the signal to that muscle that's causing it to be activated and working. And it actually, it's like a brain signal that allows that muscle to relax. And so, quick little rant on that. So, myofascial release works, stretching provides temporary relief, but is not good for posture. The last piece about the postural piece is that you know, the major reason I haven't made progress is because while I was doing the myofascial releases, inhibiting the overactive muscles, I was still training really hard. I was still going to the gym, doing weightlifting, doing a lot of calisthenics. And the thing about mus muscle imbalances is that if you have a side that's strong and a side that's weak, no matter how much attention you try to pay to it, as long as you're doing a bilateral movement like pushing, pulling, squatting, deadlifting, the side that's strong and big is gonna stay strong and big, is gonna do more work, and the side that's weaker is gonna continue being weaker. Think of it like bringing a straight A student and a straight E or F student, putting them together to work on a project and expecting them to divide the work equally. The straight A student will always do more work and the straight F student is always going to do the bare minimum. He's gonna look like he's working, but in reality, the other one is doing the majority of the work. So that's how it's been with my lower body, my right side doing most of the work, and my upper body, my left side doing most of the work. To the point that to me it's very visible, one is bigger than the other, and it feels very different. So how am I fixing that? I'm focusing primarily on myofascial release, and I'm doing what is known as a movement <laughs> elimination. Essentially, it's like going on an, elim an elimination diet Kind of like when you cut out gluten, dairy, sugar, alcohol, caffeine, spicy food, all that stuff you've already tried, but you're doing the same thing for movement. So you're ceasing the reconditioning, the reprogramming, the reinforcement of the current imbalances that you have, and you're focusing on inhibiting and releasing the overactive tissues. Now that goes along with other professionally designed corrective exercises to actually rebalance the hips, to rebalance the rib cage, restabilize the core and glutes, open up the spine, things that are outside of the scope of this video, but I'd be more than happy to do master classes on in the future. But to give you a gist, that's what I've been working on. So I'm still pain-free, still working on rebalancing my posture, but now I actually know all the pieces to it. All the pieces that were messing me up before, why things were difficult to change and what I'm gonna do about it. So that's probably the best news that I can give you. Now moving on to another very important piece that I learned about recently, and it has to do with gut health. Now before I've talked about nutrition, the importance of an anti-inflammatory diet, bringing in whole foods, supplementing with other nutrients that you might be missing from your diet, and I just completed an online certification in functional nutrition that's taught by the world's leading functional medicine doctors including the founder of functional medicine, the guy that started all of this revolution in the 60s. And what I'm learning is that it is entirely possible and actually very common for people to be sensitive and or allergic to healthy foods. Foods that you would look at, you're like, this is a whole food, it is nutritious, it's coming straight from the earth, I'm gonna eat it. And little do you know, it might actually be increasing inflammation in your gut and perpetuating chronic pain and illness. I'll give you a few examples. You already know about dairy. You already know about gluten. Now both of those are not great for our health because oftentimes they're very, very, very processed leading to all kinds of intolerances. But what if I told you that if you're allergic to gluten or if you have a gluten sensitivity, doctors can now guarantee that you would have that sensitivity to corn and anything that has corn in it. And if you live in the US, you should know by now that most products contain corn. Other things that can trigger the gluten allergy is almost any kind of other grain, 
gluten containing or not, including oats, quinoa, and soy. So again, this expands our knowledge, and this is something called molecular mimicry, where if you're sensitive to one ingredient, that ingredient, if it's similar enough in molecular structure in other foods, can trigger that same inflammatory response, and it'll cause your immune system to attack it, literally attack the food that you're eating, thinking that it's bad. Another example is nightshades. Nightshades are a group of vegetables such as tomatoes, eggplants, goji berries, potatoes, excluding sweet potatoes. So think like white potatoes and a few others, but those are the most common ones. Peppers, sorry, that's, that's the, the, one of the main ones. Now these are a group of vegetables that are known to cause inflammation in a good chunk of the population. And the reason for it is that in the past, we didn't consume these foods regularly. And when we consumed tomatoes, it was to make tomato sauce by peeling it and taking out the seeds. Nowadays, we eat these foods in their entirety and both the seeds and the peel can be inflammatory to a lot of people. So many people find benefit by excluding nightshades while they're doing a detox. And you know, one important thing to add about this is that if you're dealing with any sort of chronic pain, you're dealing with brain fog, inability to sleep, high levels of stress, and different food sensitivities, it takes a bit of time to fully heal it and reap the benefit. And sometimes, if you're really sensitive to a food ingredient and it is reintroduced in your diet, either you're having a bad day and you say, you know, screw it, I'm gonna have some ice cream or, or, or bread or whatever, or it's introduced to you by accident because you go eat out and you don't have any idea or control over the ingredients, that could easily re-trigger inflammation and set you back. And those are small little details that can really hinder you on your healing process, whether you realize it or not. So be mindful that for some people, they notice relief in as little as 10 days. And that's a good chunk of us. For others, it might take a couple of weeks. For some, it could take a month three months or even six months if you're dealing with a series of inflammatory illnesses like autoimmune disorders. So keep that in mind as you begin refining your diet and doing an elimination diet. And if you are going to try an elimination diet, it's best that you only stick with the foods that have very, very low rates of inflammation and sensitivities. And that includes sources of protein like organic grass-fed beef, wild-caught salmon. Eggs actually can cause sensitivities to a lot of people, especially egg whites. They contain a protein called albumin that many of us are sensitive to. So keep those out for now. The usual you know, evils like gluten, dairy, alcohol, wheat, sugar, all these can stay out too. Leafy green vegetables will be your friend. So think salads, non-starchy veggies, sweet potatoes are okay. You know, things like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, make sure you cook them well or steam them really well so that they don't, you know, cause a lot of gas and bloating when you eat them. And low sugar fruits like avocados, olives, lemons, and you know, berries in moderation. I tried this exact protocol that I just shared with you for 10 days, and even though I wasn't de dealing with serious inflammation, just doing that diet for 10 days, I dropped about 10 pounds of fat in those 10 days. And on top of that, my sleep improved, my energy improved, my body was overall less achy, and I felt incredible. And my hunger was really regulated. Like I only wanted to eat when I was really hungry, I didn't have cravings, I didn't have like rushes of anxiety and stress. I was able to work longer hours. It was incredible. Now it meant that I wasn't hanging out with people and eating out. I was only cooking and eating the food that I bought myself and that I'm preparing myself. That way it's not full of processed oils. I'm only using coconut oil or butter to make it. And it had incredible results. Third portion. So now we've talked about the posture piece and the movement piece. We've talked about gut health. And to sum up the piece about gut health, the reason I brought all this up is because if you've been dealing with inflammation for a long time, you'll develop something called leaky gut syndrome, which is where the intestinal lining, which is just one cell thin, starts to have holes in it. 
due to inflammation. Now these outside parasites and fungi that you know are generally contained and protected and managed within the gut now start leaking in your bloodstream and they could end up anywhere. We're talking fungal overgrowth, parasite overgrowth, you know, bacteria that's okay in the gut, that isn't okay in other parts of the body leaking out and can even, you know, lead to end up in your brain. Now the brain has something called the blood brain barrier that normally protects it against these things, but with high enough levels of inflammation, chronic and long enough, that blood brain barrier can be, you know, broken. And that's when you have, you know, things like depression, anxiety, and brain fog. So none of this is to scare you, but it's to really and honestly tell you and give you the full picture of how nutrition plays a massive role in your healing and lowering inflammation, regaining control over your health. And a lot of mainstream knowledge just doesn't cut it. You need a customized, individualized approach, and you need to do this elimination diet to figure out what it is specifically you're allergic to. And you do that by introducing the new foods that you took out one by one each for about three days or so. I'll make a more expanded video on this, but for now, I figured a lot of you are gonna wanna know that. So 10 days just eating the grass-fed beef, wild-caught salmon, leafy greens, and low-sugar fruits. And then let's say on the first day after day 11, you reintroduce eggs. You wait a couple of days and see if any symptoms come back. If they do, you're having a reaction to it. If they don't, then you're probably fine. Then you introduce nightshades. Then you reintroduce things like raw dairy, and so on and so forth. Again, this should be really systematized and tracked properly so that you don't lose track and you're not just kind of doing things in your head. You want this to make sense and to be accurate. And again, at the end of the video, I'm gonna give some more resources on some of the stuff that I'm building and creating for you to help you manage this. Third piece of this after gut health is stress and trauma. Now, I would say I'm probably like the least stressed I've ever been. I have the most responsibilities to do, running my own business, making content for you guys and trying to provide for this community, still living my life, managing my own health. I'm doing more than I ever have, yet my stress levels are lower because I've managed to respond to stress much better through daily movement, through breath work, through releasing trapped emotions, managing my relationships, setting boundaries around them so that they're working for me and there's synergy in it. And you know, there's no codependence and stress coming from that. And also, having community like i cannot i cannot stress the power of community having people to lean on when you need them having people to celebrate with when you're winning because success by yourself is just miserable and you know the devastating effects of loneliness on our health both mental health spiritual health financial health and of course physical health and you know i've really been grateful to take control of this part because even when my posture isn't perfect, when my gut health was still a work in progress, the fact that I was able to manage my stress, tap into the power of community, and be able to be present in my body on a moment to moment basis, no matter what's going on outside, is what's helped me persevere. And on that note, again, like I've mentioned before, the online course is no longer available because it was just another thing, another set of videos that you're watching from home and you're doing them. No accountability, no way of integrating it into your everyday life. And that's why I've decided to put together the Healing Circle. This is a place where you can track everything you're doing and share it with community. I'm talking about daily habits, trigger releases, movement routines, um, a log for you to track how you're feeling, rate your level of pain on a day-to-day -day basis, track your levels of stress, your nutrition, bringing everything together in one place. And it's gonna be on an app on your phone with access to a bunch of other men, a bunch of other brothers, like a little tribe of us all healing together, working through this, with me leading the coaching sessions live every single week. This is sort of what I have envisioned so far and it's, gonna, it's not open yet, it's gonna open up soon, and I'm probably only gonna accept a couple of people, maybe five to 10 people to join in. And if you're interested in checking it out, I'm gonna do a masterclass webinar on that in the next couple of days. You can sign up for it in the link below. You're gonna get all the information on how the Healing Circle works, what you can get out of it, how you can use it to give back to this community, and whether it's something that's a good fit for you. So, 
these are all the updates that I got for you. Again, I'm very happy to be sharing this message with you of being pain-free, of learning everything that I've learned and being able to share and give back to you guys. You know, I think about this community every single day. So even though I don't post regularly, just know that I'm thinking about you. I'm still here looking out for you and you're going to get through this. Whether it's with me or with other people, you're going to make it. And again, check out the resources in the description to learn more. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.